Hello, my wonderful students. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple game in Scratch. Um, and we will be doing this by using some new tools in here, some new programming tools. Uh, the first one will be sensing. The sensing blocks are blocks that we can use to teach Scratch uh, how to tell if one sprite is touching another, if one sprite is touching an object, uh, an edge, or what have you. The other blocks we'll be using are what we call conditional loops. In this case, we'll be using an if-then conditional loop. What that means is that if this condition is met or if this event happens, only then will the secondary condition or the secondary event happen. So if this happens, then this will happen. Um, and the third thing we'll be using is we will be creating variables. And variables are a way to keep track of information, keep track of data. In this case, we are going to create a variable to uh, that we will call score. And it will keep track of how many times the robot touches the star. So let's begin. So I have already brought in a couple of backdrops and a couple of sprites. We have a robot sprite, we have a star sprite, and we have a couple of, oops, we have a couple of backdrops. I brought in two space backdrops, stars and then galaxy. And then we've got, like I said, the robot and star. So the object of this game is for, we want to use keys on our keypad, on our keyboard of our device, to move the robot up and down, left to right. And we the goal is for the robot to capture the star as many times as possible as, this, as the star moves randomly around the screen. So our conditional loop will be to determine uh, if the robot touches the star, then the score variable will increase by one. So we have to create a score variable, of course. So again, if the robot touches the star, then the score variable will increase by one. So let's see how this works. So I will go on the robot. I, I click on the robot to select him. And the first thing I want to do is, is determine where he's going to start. I want him to start here. And those are his coordinates. His X coordinate is negative 155. His Y coordinate is negative 73. So when the green flag is clicked, I want him to be in exactly that spot. <clears throat> it's always important to determine where your characters or sprites will begin at the be very beginning of a game because uh, there is no such thing as a reset button in Scratch. And the star, I think I want the star to start here. Whoops. Oh, no, I was right. Okay. So when the green flag is clicked, I want this star to be exactly where it is now, which is negative 1 and 139. So I will go and find that coordinate. Okay. So that's all set. And also, when the green flag is clicked, I want the correct backdrop to show up. And that would be not the galaxy, but the stars, which is what we see on the screen right now. Okay, so we've basically created our reset. Okay, so now we want to program in some things that will, we want to use our arrow keys on the keyboard, our up and down arrow to go up and down, our left and right arrows to go left and right. So we need to put that in there. So events. when the key is pressed. And of course, we're not using the space bar, we're using the up arrow. And remember the X and Y axis. So the X axis, the X axis goes left to right. So if there's a positive change in X, that would mean the character will go to the right. If there's a negative change in X, that means the character will go to the left. And then for the up and down, the Y axis goes up and down vertically. So if there's a positive change in Y for the character's coordinates, that would mean the character would go up. 
If there's a negative change in y for the character, the character would go down. So that's important to keep in mind. So we need to go over to the motion. And we're going to find, because this is the up arrow, so we want change in y. So change in y by 10 when you hit the up arrow. Well, let's test that out. There he goes. Now we're going to go back and we're going to find the next one. And in this case, we'll do the down arrow. And we're going to go to motion. And a negative change in y. We have to, of course, put in that negative. So now if I hit my down arrow, he goes down. So he goes up and he goes down. Now we do need to do the left and right. So now we go to, and this time it's going to be the right arrow, and we're going to get the x, change x by, and actually I'm going to duplicate that, that'll be easier, and we get the other one, and this is going to be left arrow, and this would be negative 10. So now, right arrow, left arrow, ta-da! So that part's all set. And notice, click on green flag, he goes back to his original location, which is the X and Y coordinates I designated. So he's all set. Now, the star. <clears throat> so we did the moving of the robot. And now we need to put in the code for the star. So if we think about it, we don't want to make the star too easy to catch. So we have to think about what we'd want it to do. And one of the keys to this that was really helpful is that, so we're going to find the forever loop. And the random position is a really good one to use. So let's go to motion. And if we think about, we don't want to just go to a random position because that would mean it would just show up in a random position. Instead, we might want to glide. So glide, whoops, glide to a random position. So let's see what happens when we do that. Now, does that make it too easy perhaps? Hmm, could be. So maybe I'll have it glide more quickly. So remember that gliding so many seconds to random position de determines how quickly or how slowly the, the sprite will glide. So if we make the seconds a smaller number, like a perhaps 0.5, see how it now moves more quickly on the screen. So it will make your game more challenging. Okay, so let's stop that. So that was pretty easy. So now what we would like to do is add some sound and we want to uh, put in some information, some additional information on the robot. So on the robot, let's go down a little bit further. On the robot, we're going to put in some additional code. So I'm going to make another script when the green flag is clicked and again in a forever loop because we want we want to know when the robot is touched every time the robot touches the star we want to know it forever and ever so that's why it's in a forever loop. So if then this is that if then conditional loop if one condition happens, the other one will, and only until then. And now we're going to use our sensing blocks. That's going to, we're going to teach Scratch when to sense that the robot is touching the star. So, touching. If the robot is not touching the mouse pointer, but touching the star. But notice there are other choices here if it touches the edge. So, if 
because we're coding on the robot. If the robot is touching the star, then what do we want to happen? Let's play some sounds. Uh, we don't want this. Mm. Ah, collect. That's a good one. So we're going to use the collect sound. It's, and that was already built into the robot, so that was easy. So we're going to say play sound collect until done. So that what this means is every single time that the robot touches the star, and only when it touches the star, the sound will play collect until done. And this is in a forever loop. If you didn't have the forever loop, it would only check for that condition once and never again. So it's really important to have that forever loop. Now, what we want to do is we want to score some points. So this is where we can do some additional things. So now when, when, the, when the robot touches the star, what else do we want it to do besides play a sound? Well, we want to have a score that goes up. So we actually have to create a score variable. So this is where the variables are. We click on variables. And notice we don't have any variables yet, or they would be listed here. So we want to make a variable. And we're going to call it score. You can call it whatever you want. And we want available for all sprites because we might, might want to add to this game later. So we'll click on OK. So notice now you have a score variable. Now it shows up on the screen because you've checked it off. If for some reason you did not want that score to show up on the screen, you could just take the check mark off. Um, in most cases, I think you want this, the variable counter to, to show because you want to see what happens with the count. Um, so now, again, there is no reset in Scratch, so you must create your own reset. So when, this, when the game begins, what do you want the score to be? You want it to be zero, correct? So we have to actually tell Scratch to do that. So set score, not my variable because that's generic, set score to zero at the very beginning when the green flag is clicked. Because remember, there is no reset. You create your own resets. Now, what do we want to happen when the robot touches that star? So we said play a sound, but we also want to change the score by one. So we want to change the score by a positive one. Of course, we can make a negative if something else happened, but that is a more complex game. So we set it to zero, and then we change it by one. Of course, we can make that any number we want. And now we want to play our game. So let's see what happens. So we're moving, and the score is going up every time I hit that. And there is my simple, simple game. Now, of course, I can add a timer to it. I can level up to create a second level. But this is a very basic and simple game using creating variables, using sensing blocks, and using if-then conditional loops.